Hey, it's Professor Dave. Let's talk about quantum gravity. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. When we looked at the standard model of particle physics, we learned about fermions and bosons. Fermions are the particles that comprise ordinary matter, while bosons are the particles that mediate the four fundamental forces, which in quantum theory we no longer view as field forces, but instead as interactions between bosons and fermions. Electromagnetism is mediated by photons, the weak nuclear force by W and Z bosons, and the strong nuclear force by gluons. These particles have all been confirmed experimentally and are quite well understood. We also understand that after the Big Bang, billions of years ago, the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force became distinct forces after existing for a short duration as a singular force, called the electroweak force. For a short time before that, this electroweak force and the strong nuclear force were also one even more fundamental force. But that leaves one more step to go. We have not, as of the time of the writing of this course, been able to verify the existence of the graviton, the hypothetical particle that should mediate the gravitational force. Being able to describe such a quantum field theory for gravity, called quantum gravity, could allow us to show how, for the briefest instant after the Big Bang, all four fundamental forces were actually one singular force, and the theory that governs this force would therefore be a theory of everything, a theory from which all the forces and all the particles could be derived. This is obviously an area of great interest in physics today, and there are many competing theories attempting to succeed in this monolithic task. Such a theory would completely reconcile general relativity with quantum field theory and offer a complete description of the universe that currently eludes us. So why can't we do it? Well, the tricky part is that general relativity and quantum theory, while they both enjoy mountains of empirical evidence supporting their validity, are completely incompatible with one another as currently formulated. Because general relativity looks at space-time on the grandest scale, and quantum theory looks at the tiniest particles, their realms are vastly different, and we currently use them in isolation as the situation deems appropriate. If things are very tiny, they are quanta, and we use quantum theory. If things are very big and massive, they warp space-time, and we use relativity. But there are certain situations in physics where we need to talk about things that are both very tiny and very massive. A black hole is such a situation, as it can be regarded as a dimensionless point with a mass of anywhere from a few solar masses to a few million solar masses. Another example of such a situation is found in early universe cosmology, where the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang is extremely mysterious to us. The Big Bang involved the formation of the universe from a single point, meaning that all of the energy in the universe was, for an instant, contained in an unimaginably tiny volume at an absurdly high temperature, which then cooled as it expanded. Through increasingly sophisticated experiments in particle accelerators, we have been able to recreate conditions in the early universe at successively earlier and earlier times, or epochs, which is how we came to understand how the forces must have been unified and subsequently split apart. But, as we said, in that first instant, before gravity broke away from the other three forces, the universe was so dense that our current understanding of physics is unable to describe it. While this seems like a problem so daunting that we may never figure it out, we must remember that humanity will always progress. In the past century, we have made so many astonishing discoveries that have transformed our understanding of the universe. Quantum gravity will indeed be developed. It's not a matter of if, only when, and by whom. Maybe it could be you. Or, if quantum field theories are not your cup of tea, there are lots of other problems in physics that need to be solved. 
Exotic concepts like dark matter and dark energy are popular topics of research. If the names sound mysterious, it's for good reason. Because while we have a lot of evidence that dark matter exists, we don't have the faintest idea what the stuff is. But a true discussion of dark matter has to be rooted in the observational astronomy that brought about its discovery. We look out into the universe with telescopes, see what's out there, and try our best to make sense of it. So if you want to know more about stars and black holes and dark matter, you'll have to wait for the upcoming astronomy course. But astronomy and physics are close bedfellows, so it's a good thing that you've watched these modern physics tutorials first. I hope that you have been able to get a basic grasp of the incredible advancements that have occurred in this field over the last century or so, and that you are inspired to learn more about this and other related topics. Until next time, Thanks for watching guys, subscribe to my channel for more tutorials, support me on Patreon so I can keep making content, and as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.